In our previous meeting, we covered the extraordinary story of Sun Wukong, the Monkey King. Now we are about to discover an even bigger tale, the epic journey to the West. If you have not yet experienced the fascinating saga of Sun Wukong, I invite you to discover it. But if you're already familiar with the Monkey King or just want to jump right into Journey to the West, I'll give you a quick rundown of the events that paved the way for this exciting journey. Get ready for a tale filled with wonder, wisdom, and adventure. In this video, we will know the history of the journey to the West. But before, I want to start by extending a heartfelt thank you to everyone who follows and supports us on a daily basis with their opinions, likes, and comments. YouTube recently introduced a feature that allows us to start a membership program for our channel. It is a unique opportunity for mythology enthusiasts, story lovers, and loyal fans of this channel to give us even more support. This membership is not just a way to support our channel, it is also a tool that helps me, as a content creator, become less dependent on ad revenue. This means I can tackle sensitive topics without fearing loss of monetization. So if you're eager to lend a helping hand and want to become a more integral part of our community, here's your chance. I wish I could offer you a ton in return. But as many of you know, beginnings are always difficult. However, what I can promise you is that your help will directly contribute to improving our channel. All the support will be channeled to create more quality content for you. So if you love what we're doing and want to see more, consider becoming a member. Your support means the world to us. Thank you for being with us on this journey. The curtain of the story rises on the mountain of flowers and fruit in the midst of the vast and turbulent eastern ocean, where an ancient stone monolith, forged by time's own hands, comes to life in the form of a monkey. This inquisitive and adventurous monkey would become known as Sun Wukong, the Monkey King, a creature destined to shake the very pillars of the heavens. At first, Sun Wukong leads a life of fun and carelessness in his monkey kingdom. But the fear of death and old age drives him to seek immortality, and he sets out on a journey through seas and mountains, searching for a teacher who can teach him the secrets of eternity. Finally, he arrives at the abode of the Taoist sage Subhuti, who, seeing the immense potential of the monkey, decides to instruct him in the mystical arts. Over the years, Sun Wukong acquires divine abilities. He learns to transform into anything he wants, from a bird to a tree, from an insect to a huge giant. He learns to fly through the wind and the clouds and to call storms and lightning as he pleases. Furthermore, he arms himself with a magical staff capable of changing size at his will, a weapon drawn from the very foundations of the Eastern Ocean. But his immense power and growing pride lead him to defy the gods themselves. In a show of strength and cunning, Sun Wukong wreaks havoc on the Heavenly Palace, defeating even the mighty god of war, Neja, and resisting the onslaught of the Thunder King himself. His rebellion rumbles through the skies, shaking the cosmic pillars and jeopardizing the established celestial order. The gods, fearful and bewildered, turn to the wise Buddha to resolve the crisis. Buddha, in his infinite wisdom, sees beyond the Monkey King's bravado and arrogance and accepts Sun Wukong's challenge. If he can leap out of Buddha's palm, then the heavenly throne will be his. But if he fails, he will be sentenced to eternal prison. Unable to resist such a gamble, Sun Wukong leaps with all his might, flying through the skies until he reaches what he believes to be the end of the universe. There, he sees five golden pillars, and to demonstrate his feet, he leaves his mark on one of them before returning. However, when he arrives in the Buddha's presence, he realizes that the five pillars were nothing more than the fingers of the Buddha's huge hand. In the blink of an eye, Sun Wukong is condemned and imprisoned under a mountain, sealed by the Buddha's own scripture. The Divine Buddha, although he achieved enlightenment and liberation from suffering, did not leave the world of mortals. He continues to watch with love and compassion the struggles of humanity and wishes to alleviate his suffering. The Buddha sees the emperor as a just and compassionate leader, one who has the ability to undertake a mission of such magnitude. In his dream, the Buddha appears to the emperor and tells him about human suffering. He tells her that although he has ruled well and justly, there is a way to bring even more peace and harmony to the empire and the world at large. 
The Buddha tells him about the sutras of the true teaching, ancient and sacred texts that contain the teachings to free souls from suffering and guide them towards enlightenment. These texts are in distant India, far from the reach of the emperor and his people. The Buddha entrusts the emperor with the task of recovering these sutras. He says it will be a long and difficult journey, but also a great opportunity for growth and transformation. This mission is not just for the emperor or his empire, but for all of humanity. The Buddha believes that by spreading these teachings, much suffering can be alleviated and more souls can be led to the path of enlightenment. Therefore, the emperor, moved by the vision of the Buddha and his love for his people, decides to organize this trip. Thus begins the great adventure. For this feat of epic proportions, Tang Sanzang is chosen, a monk of unwavering devotion and faith, whose virtue and diligence are as immaculate as the white lilies that bloom on the edge of a serene pool. Tang Sanzang, also known as Xuanzang, was no ordinary man. His life, marked by divinity from the beginning, was always destined for greatness, although not in the conventional way. Tang Sanzang was born into a noble family during the Tang Dynasty. He was the youngest in the house, loved and pampered by his parents and siblings. However, life at the imperial court did not appeal to him. He felt a restlessness inside him, a thirst for deeper, more momentous knowledge than his privileged status could provide. When he was only 10 years old, a tragedy shook his world. His mother died suddenly due to an unknown disease. The death of his mother left a deep scar on his young heart, but he also planted the seed of an existential doubt. He began to wonder about the meaning of life, the inevitability of death, and the possibility of salvation. In searching for answers to these deep questions, he found solace in the Buddhist teachings. The concept of nirvana, the promise of liberation from the cycle of birth and death, appealed to him deeply. Despite the resistance of his father and brothers, he decided to renounce his life as a prince and embrace the monastic life. At the monastery, Tang Sanzang was noted for his dedication, intelligence, and compassion. He earned the respect of his teachers and peers for his fervor in seeking enlightenment. Yet even in the quiet of the monastery, the doubt persisted. Despite his best efforts, he could not achieve the inner peace that he longed for. He felt as if he was missing something, as if he was destined for something greater. This concern led him to embark on a journey of self-discovery through China, visiting various Buddhist temples and monasteries. In each place, he sought enlightened teachers who could guide him on his spiritual path. However, instead of finding answers, he only found more questions. The sutras he studied were either incomplete or poorly translated, and the discord between different schools of Buddhist thought only added to his confusion. Then one night, he had a prophetic dream in which the Buddha entrusted him with the sacred task of traveling to India to obtain the true Buddhist scriptures. Moved by this vision and willing to fulfill his destiny, Tang Sanzang prepared to embark on the perilous journey to the West. However, this mission is not a mere walk through the countryside. It is an odyssey that traverses rugged mountains, unforgiving deserts and stormy seas, filled with demons and beasts that wait in every shadow. The first companion to join Sanzang was Sun Wukong, the Monkey King. They met at the Mountain of Fruits and Flowers, where Wukong had been imprisoned for 500 years. Buddha considers the condition of the monk and the journey that awaits him. In his infinite compassion and wisdom, he decides to release Sun Wukong from his prison, making him Tang Sanzang's protector. For the Monkey King, this is his chance at redemption a path to freedom through the service and protection of a monk on a sacred mission. Thus, the mountain trembles and shakes, and with a shudder, Sun Wukong breaks free from his stone prison. Despite his earlier rebellion, the Monkey King bows to the Buddha's will, accepting his role as the monk's protector. It is a union of the sacred and the profane, the union of the saint and the savage, an alliance forged in hope and redemption. With his magical staff in hand and quick-witted as ever, Sun Wukong vows to protect Tang Sanzang on his journey to the West. He will face demons, beasts, and the elements themselves to ensure the safety of the monk and the success of his mission. In return, the Buddha promises him the freedom he longs for. So, with Emperor Tang's blessing and the prayers of an entire kingdom behind them, the monk and the monkey king set off into the unknown. Their journey to the West begins, but on this epic quest, they do not walk alone. Two repentant figures, 
banished by their own actions, join them, seeking both redemption and purpose. Jubaji began his existence as a heavenly immortal, known as the Canopic Marshal. He was a highly respected being in heaven, but he had a vice that would ultimately cause his downfall, his weakness for earthly temptations. During a celestial celebration, after drinking too much immortality nectar, Baji went wild and harassed the moon princess, Chang'e. As punishment for his lewd behavior, the gods cast him out of heaven and placed a curse on him that transformed his appearance to that of a humanoid pig. Thrown into the underworld, Baji was forced to live a humble existence as a farmer. The memory of his former life in the heavens brought him deep sadness, and he wrestled with his grotesque form and his insatiable appetite, symbols of his moral decay. In time, however, he found some peace in his new life. And when Tang Sanzang came looking for company on his journey to the west, Loi saw an opportunity to redeem himself. Although he continued to struggle with his temptations, his loyalty to Sanzang and his desire for redemption compelled him to continue. From the depths of a river of sand, a shadowy figure emerges. The former heavenly general Sha Wu Jing now turned into a monster. Sha Wu Jing, also known as Sand Monk, had an equally tragic past. Before his transformation, he was a celestial general known as the Demon Tanner. However, during a heavenly party, he accidentally broke a very valuable vase. This seemingly insignificant act was considered a serious crime by the gods. He was punished by the Jade Emperor, who struck him 800 times with a staff and exiled him to Earth. Condemned to live in exile, Sha Wu Jing spent centuries in solitude, condemned to frighten humans with his monstrous appearance. Every attempt at contact with humanity only resulted in fear and rejection, plunging him into despair. However, his meeting with Tang Sanzang changed his life. Drawn by the monk's noble mission, Sha Wu Jing decided to join his journey to the West. Although his appearance was still frightening, his loyalty to Sanzang and his determination to redeem himself finally gave him purpose and community. His journey with Sanzang became an opportunity to transform his curse into a path to redemption and self-knowledge. Together these four unlikely companions, each with their own sins and hopes, set out on the long and dangerous journey to the West. They, who have known glory and fall, who have been touched by both grace and curse, walk together, united in purpose. Throughout their journey, they will face countless trials and tribulations, learn profound lessons about compassion and humility, and strive to prove that despite their past faults, they are worthy of redemption and enlightenment. Our courageous quartet, led by the virtuoso Tang Sanzang, set out into the vast Orient, their path marked by the setting sun and the brilliance of the moon, and at every dawn and dusk, the ever-present threat of demons and creatures of the deep lurked. These evil spirits, motivated and hungry for the immortality that Tang Sanzang's flesh promised, emerged from the shadows of mythology and entered the world of men. Their terrible desire led them to roam the earth, disguising themselves with friendly faces and kind hands. Every step westward they took, every rock they overturned, and every trail they followed was a dance with danger. The smiles they met often hid menacing jaws, Offers of help often turned treacherous traps, but they were not alone in this perilous march. They had Sun Wukong, the Monkey King, whose wits and supernatural abilities unfolded in his shield, his sword, his defense against the darkness. Sun Wukong, wand in hand, faced every demon that dared to cross his path. His weapon, a gift from the Eastern Sea Dragon King, was as versatile as he was, growing as big as the tallest mountain or shrinking to the size of a needle at his whim. With every twist and strike, he turned enemies to dust, raining ash to the ground. But the magic wand was not the only tool at his disposal. Sun Wukong also had the wits of him. He outwitted the most intricate traps, unmasked the most cunning demons, solved the most complex riddles. His intelligence, sharp as a diamond blade, cut through the cobwebs of deceit and revealed the truth. A particularly significant tale in Journey to the West occurs when our travelers come to a village that has been afflicted with drought. The village is in the grip of a water demon that has sealed the rain clouds. The villagers are desperate for rain, and in their desperation, 
are willing to sacrifice a local maiden to the water demon in exchange for her mercy. When Tang Sanzang and his group arrive at the village, they learn of the impending tragedy. Although the maiden has resigned herself to her fate, Sun Wukong rebels against the idea of this unjust sacrifice. He decides that she will face the water demon and force it to release the rain clouds. The confrontation between Sun Wukong and the water demon is fierce. Sun Wukong fights with courage and cunning, but the water demon is powerful and controls the elements. After a prolonged confrontation, Sun Wukong manages to trick the demon and locks it in his magical jar. With the demon defeated, the rain clouds are released and he rains down on the thirsty village. Zhu Baji is a character whose weaknesses and vices often get the group into trouble, but which in turn result in moments of humor and valuable teachings. A particularly prominent episode occurs in the plot of a demon in the form of a beautiful woman. The beauty of this woman immediately captures the heart of Zhu Baji, blinding him to any possibility that she may be a hoax. Ignoring Sun Wukong's warnings, Baji chases his wish and sets out to marry the woman, convinced that her happiness rests in her hands. But his crush on her quickly turns into misadventure when the woman's true identity is revealed. Baji is forced to face not only the demon he once loved, but also the reality of his weakness. Despite the disappointment and humiliation, Baji displays an admirable trait, his resilience. Despite the blows he takes, he always picks himself up, learns from his mistakes, and moves on. But Baji isn't just a clown or a constant source of trouble. He also has moments of bravery and loyalty that show a much more complex and compassionate character. At various times, he is willing to put his life in danger to protect his friends, displaying admirable courage and loyalty. Ultimately, Baji is a reflection of the human struggle against imperfection. His journey is not only one of redemption, but also one of personal growth. While Zhu Baji is impulsive and given to his desires, Sha Wu Jing is the calm balance of the group. One of the most notable occurs when pilgrims arrive at the fast-flowing river of sand. On this part of their journey, the pilgrims encounter a seemingly insurmountable obstacle, a vast and dangerous river. They cannot cross it and are trapped on its banks. It is at this point that Sha Wu Jing proves vital to the mission. He goes ahead and uses his knowledge and his own skill to find a safe route across the river. His bravery and knowledge allow the group to cross safely. At this time, Wu Jing not only demonstrates his worth for the mission, but also his transformation from a demon to a trustworthy and courageous pilgrim monk. In addition to this episode, Wu Jing's constant presence and his commitment to the mission demonstrate his importance. He is a loyal friend and trusted companion to the other pilgrims. Although his contributions may seem less dramatic than those of his peers, Wu Jing's quiet wisdom and unwavering loyalty are essential to the group's success. On the hidden slopes of Mount Black Wind, lives a creature with dark powers that terrorized nearby towns. Her name was the White Bone Demon, a fearsome sorceress capable of shape-shifting at will. Under the guise of a forlorn maiden or generous merchant, he lured the unwary to his abode to deprive them of their lives. Rumors circulated that the White Bone Demon sought immortality, and for that, she needed the flesh of a saint. Learning of the Tang monk Sanzang's pilgrimage to the west, the sorceress decided that her meat would be the final ingredient for her immortality spell. With his decision made, he began to hatch a plan to capture the monk. When the pilgrims arrived at the mountain, the white bone demon introduced herself as a helpless young woman. With tears in her eyes, she begged Sanzang and her disciples to help her. Despite warnings from Sun Wukong, who perceived a bad omen from her, Sanzang agreed to help her. Attracted by the supposed misfortune of the young woman, Sanzang was taken to his palace. That's when the white bone lady revealed her true form and captured the monk. Meanwhile, Wukong, Zhu Baji, and Sha Wu Jing find themselves in a race against time to save their master from the sorceress's clutches. Inside the palace, San Zhang, however, was not willing to accept her fate without a fight. Instead, he decided to turn his prison into a teaching hall. He started reciting the sutras and talking about compassion, karma, and the illusory nature of immortality. Although the white bone demon was initially incredulous and scoffed at San Zhang's teachings, the monk's steadfastness and unwavering faith began to penetrate her defenses. Every word he spoke, every sutra she recited, 
began to weave a web of doubt in her heart. Meanwhile, Wu Kong and the others were fighting against the palace defenses. The White Bone Lady's magical traps, demonic servants, and dark enchantments tested their courage and skill. However, his determination to save Sanzang never wavered. Finally, after an intense battle, they managed to reach the heart of the palace. To their surprise, they found the White Bone Lady in a state of deep thought, with Sanzang safely at her side. A miracle had happened. Sanzang's words had accomplished what no physical force could have done. He had broken the stone heart of the White Bone Lady. Overwhelmed with guilt and regret, the sorceress released Sanzang and vowed to follow the path of Buddhism. Despite his strength and cunning, each encounter with evil was a test not only of his bravery, but also of his character. In each confrontation, in each challenge, the true essence of his redemption was revealed. Because on this pilgrimage, on this journey to the West, they were not only facing the demons that inhabited the world, they were also facing the demons within them. Each monster defeated, each trap avoided, each victory won, was a step toward conquering her own fears, her own weaknesses, his own vices. And so, at the crossroads between good and evil, between light and darkness, between salvation and doom, these four heroes stood up. Each battle was a spark in the forging of their souls, each victory a blow on the anvil of their character. Tang Sanzang, with his unwavering faith, constantly reminds his companions of the goodness inherent in all beings, even those who seek to harm them. Despite the challenges, they persist, overcoming each obstacle with unwavering determination and a compassionate heart. This is the true nature of his journey, a pilgrimage not only of miles but of morality, a march not only of men but of souls. Every step they take toward the West is one step closer to enlightenment, one step closer to becoming the beings they are destined to be. And at the end of a path carved through storms and shadows, mountains and seas, demons and desires, lies India, bright as dawn after a long, dark night. In this sacred sanctuary, our exhausted but unwavering heroes finally reach their destiny. Before them, the great Buddha, whose light shines with the wisdom of a thousand suns, bestows upon them the sacred sutras, a golden ribbon of universal truths, a beacon of light in the vastness of the cosmos. The return to China is a journey of realization, a pilgrimage of enlightenment. The trials and tribulations they have endured fade into the rearview mirror of their consciousness, and instead the path is filled with the light of wisdom and understanding. The monk, Tang Sanzang, bearer of the sutras and the courage that held the group together, is rewarded with the ultimate gift, enlightenment, nirvana, Buddhahood. And in that glorious moment, the eternal struggle of the monkey king Sun Wukong finds its end. His rebellion, his servitude, his protection, all of it, a cosmic dance towards redemption. Buddha, in his infinite wisdom, grants him the honor of being a protector of the Buddhist Dharma. The one who once braved the heavens now becomes his guardian. The other two protectors, Jubaji and Shao Jing, also find redemption in the light of the Buddha. Jubaji, whose gluttony and lust once led to his downfall, is transformed into an upholder of virtue. Shao Jing, whose past as a monster had marked him with infamy, is now exalted as a defender of the faith. These souls, once lost, now found, continue their journey, now not to the West, but to eternity, 